Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to the series on the 1984 Orient Red Wagon. In the last video, you saw me redo the rear suspension, SLS, hood pad, brakes, axles, all of that. In this video, we're moving to the front of the car and we're gonna tackle the front suspension. So, let's get started. Um, but what we want to do, I'll just kind of walk you through it. We're going to bust off the uh, dust cap here, or the grease cap, undo our spindle, and we're going to remove the brakes and rotors because all of this is getting replaced, including this hose. Um, I have to inspect the upper control arm. Those look to be in outstanding condition. I'm not sure if I'm going to need to do that. Um, but we also want to get the spindle off, and you can see this ball joint boot is uh that's original you know it's barely hanging in there it's still working but you can see it's cracked and the grease is coming out so it's time to change that and uh we're going to get these tie rods off then we're going to get this center link off the steering shock and all, all the way across the car do all of that now i also want to look at that zinc plating right there guys look how good that looks look how clean it is right there um yeah, anyway, just wanted to point that out. But uh, right here, there we go. See that boot up in there is all cracked? This is your control rod bushing, and that's the original one. So I want to go ahead and get this out of here too. You can see this is what they look like new. If I pull the boot up here, let's see. Here you go. See that nice boot down in there? All the grease is contained, whereas we can see right here in this one there you go see how it's all crusty and that boot is all ripped apart up in there so we're going to get those out anyway i'm over here on the passenger side and we're just removing the uh spindle nut here and what i can see these rotors have been replaced at some point because i mean i'm putting brand new ones on there but those are you know just as thick as new ones and there's no lip so somebody did a brake job pretty recently on this car. Um, but of course, we're replacing all these original brakes. Uh, but here's what I want to show you. So when we take this spindle nut off, this is what actually holds your, your brakes and wheel onto the car, um, your hub, because this is your hub right here that the wheel screws into. Um, these appear to be the original wheel bearings. So... We can see there's some old original grease right there. And then it looks like they've been repacked at least once. See the black grease in there? So that means they've been repacked. But since those are the original bearings, we want to go ahead and replace the bearings and seals also. All right, I'm on the passenger side now, and I'm just undoing the two 19-millimeter bolts that hold on this uh, caliper. And then we're actually going to use the uh, 10 millimeter and get this brake pad wear sensor off of here. See, there's your wear sensors. And guys, this is one thing uh, that you never see uh, from just normal dealers selling these vehicles. Um, those brakes actually work, right? So most dealers are gonna sell these cars with, yeah, the brakes are working, but that is a 40 year old brake caliper. There is no telling when that thing is gonna fail. So just as part of my normal process, the entire brake system gets overhauled because this thing could last another week. This thing could last another two years. There's no way of knowing. So why not go ahead and put on new stuff? Okay, next thing we're gonna do, that's a little 10 millimeter. And like I said, that holds in your brake pad wear sensor. So let's go ahead and crack this guy loose. There we go. We'll get that out. Now, another thing, this is a, that's an original brake hose, right? So sure, it's working right now, but how much longer is that 40-year-old brake hose going to be working? You know, I, uh, I come from a, a racing background, uh, building race cars. And everybody thinks in a race car, the car with the uh, biggest engine and the most horsepower is going to win. That is absolutely not true. You can have a car with half the horsepower, half the engine, but if it has better suspension and better brakes, it's going to win the race. 
So that's why the videos, I usually always start with suspension and brakes because that's what really makes the difference in a winning race car. And of course, that translates to a road car, a street driven car. The better car is going to have the better brakes and the better suspension. So anyway, enough for my rant. Let's get back to the video. And sorry, I need to add a, add a caveat to my uh, race car uh, analogy. Uh, that applies for road racing cars, you know, cars that are turning left and right. Uh, not so much for drag race cars or just cars going in a straight line. Anyway, back to the video. All right, guys, so once you have that little 10 millimeter out, you can unplug your brake pad wear sensors and they just slip out of the end right here. And I like to just leave the bolt in there, just leave it hanging. Now, if this rotor doesn't have a lip, we should be able to pull this caliper right off. Yeah, there we go. It's when they have a lip that you can't get them off. Now, notice what happened. When I started to pull that off, you see that bearing started to come loose. There we go, there's our outer wheel bearing, so it popped out a little bit, because this rotor was holding the uh, hub in place. So there we go, we're gonna, just gonna take this off, and since I'm replacing uh, these lines, we can just hang it there. Okay, now that that hub, or that caliper is off, we can actually pull the hub and rotor right off the car. And there we go, we're left with our spindle. So let's go ahead and inspect the spindle. So the spindle is what your wheel bearings ride on. You have, there you go, let's get all that wheel bearing grease off of there. You have an inner bearing, a large one that rides here, and then an outer bearing right here. And that's where those wear marks are, right there, where the bearings have been riding for 40 years. And spindles are extremely hard material. Um, they carry, you know, the weight of the car on those bearings. And we can see these are outstanding condition. Yeah, that's, you know, no reason. It's very rare that I've ever seen you have to actually replace a spindle. All right, so now that we have that off, we wanna take out these little Allen bolts here. We'll take our dust shield off of here. My Milwaukee electric uh, wrench <laughs> broke last week. So I've had to revert back to uh, hand tools. I mean, this is how I did it for like 10 years. And then they came out with those electric, uh, you know, lithium battery wrenches, which, oh my God, what a game changer. Um, <laughs> so here we go. We're back to doing this by hand. And then there we go. This is just the dust shield, which uh, I guess this keeps, you know, brake dust or, or it really keeps debris from the road getting up on your brake rotor. And then what you're left here, this is your steering knuckle. Your steering knuckle has your lower ball joint and up top your upper ball joint. And that attaches the lower control arms and the upper control arms of your suspension. Okay, here is the, uh, the hub and rotor. And there's our inner bearing right there. And you know, thing was still working. Probably had some life left in it. But like I said, we're replacing all that. And the rotor is actually bolted to the hub with five bolts here. And we're gonna take those out and you can see there's a seal right here. The seal protects this inner bearing. There's the inner bearing. So we're gonna go ahead and get, get the inner bearing out of here. Now, the part that you can reuse is your hub. Your hub doesn't go bad. Um, your hub, unless there's some damage or some sort of accident, but your hub is just this, you know, steel piece right here that your wheel bolt bolts to, your bearings go in, and your rotor goes on. So we're actually gonna take the hub off, we're gonna clean it up in the parts washer, we're gonna repaint the hub back to the factory gloss, you know, basically restore the hub, make it really look nice again, which is totally unnecessary, but I like my suspension to look really nice. Uh, and then we're gonna put in the new bearings and the new rotor. Okay, now that we have all the brake system off, I need to remove these 17 millimeter nuts from all of the steering linkage that goes all the way across the car and then I can pop off all the steering linkage. I'll show you guys uh, how I do just one of them and then I'll knock out the rest. Okay, first thing we do, we get this 17 millimeter off. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is put on a ball joint separator. Now, <clears throat> I know a lot of mechanics will actually just hit this with a hammer until that pops loose. That's a little barbaric. Um, I just like to use a ball joint separator. And uh, I mean, either way works. I know tons of my mechanic buddies that just hit them with hammers until they pop loose. But I just put a ball joint separator on there like that. And it's going to pinch together when I tighten this and just pop it out. Uh, 
I don't know. For me, that works a lot better. There we go. See how that just pop, popped loose like that? All right, guys, what we're doing now, this is your steering stabilizer shock. It goes all the way across. It's a shock, and it's a damper, I guess, for when you hit bumps or have abrupt uh, steering changes due to bumpy roads. This will, this will dampen the movement of the steering system. And it is a 17-millimeter nut. And we want to remove that. Now, this you can reuse because there's no, this is not like a load bearing, you know. This is not like a load bearing bolt or, you know, whatever. It just holds the end of this little shock in. So we're actually going to put that right through there. This is the actual frame of the car. And we'll just put this back in here and put our nut back on there so we know where it is because we can reuse that. There's, a, there's never a reason to change that. And here's where the other end of that shock attaches. See, it went from the frame to our, uh, our center link. And it also attaches to the center link right there. So we'll actually save this nut also because we're going to use it to attach our new shock to our new center link. So let's go ahead and finish popping out the ball joints of the center link and then we have our suspension out, our steering components out. All right, guys, here's that uh, center link, and here is the shock. But yeah, this is the bolt that we want to save to reattach uh, to our new center link. Okay, let's go ahead and start getting some of our new parts out of here. There we go. Old parts, new parts. So first thing we're going to do is just reattach our steering shock here to our new uh, center link. I think they call it the drag link. I think that's the official name. And we'll tighten that up later. We're just getting it loosely in place. Set that over here. Actually, that's going to go on the car like that. Um, now, what I want to do, so I'm going to throw these away. These are the old ones. Now, here's the tie rods. So what I want to do, so it makes it easier when we go to the alignment shop, is I want to adjust the new tie rods as close as I can uh, to, the, to the old tie rods. That way we can at least drive it to the alignment shop and it's not going to be all crazy with the wheels, you know, pointing in all different directions. Um, there we go. Now we can adjust it. See, I can turn it. I think this one's left hand thread and this is normal thread. Now let's go ahead and loosen up the other side here. And that's just a, a locking nut there. <clears throat> All right, there we go. There we go. Now we can turn both of these. So what I like to do, this is uh, how it came off the car. So I try to get these pointed in the same direction. There we go. And this one's going to be somewhat like that. And we want to get them the same length. So you can see, there you go. You can see once I have these lined up, see it's a little shorter here on this side. So we want to twist this. I think this is going to go clockwise to actually undo it. And we want to get these the exact same length. So let me work on that here for a second. There we go. I have those roughly the exact same length. So now I'm going to tighten these back down and I install it on the car and we can drive it to the alignment shop easier. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and then we'll go back to working on the car. Okay, I've got all these adjusted. You can see I wrote P for passenger, D for driver. There we go. 
That way, because they're adjusted for the passenger and driver's side, let's go back to the car and finish up over here. All right, guys, the next thing we want to do is compress this original spring so I can remove it from the vehicle. And uh, that's going to allow me to remove the lower control arm, uh, the control rod right there, and get access to the control rod bushing. Uh, this is the control rod bushing. And you have to take the spring out to uh, install that. So this is uh, the original Mercedes tool. Um, uh, this one was about, I think, $900 wholesale. Um, but, I mean, you, if you're only going to do this job like once, you could purchase, you know, the $150 Chinese copy. But that tool is not going to last, and it can be very dangerous over extended periods. Um, so I do this a lot. So I have the very expensive, nice-made tool. Here it is right here. Klein or Jadori. I think it's... Uh, might be Swedish. I, I I can't I can't remember. Uh, definitely overseas. And there you go. So you can stick it down inside your spring and compress it. So let me get this installed on the car, and I'll show you how this works. All right, guys. What you can see here, I've got the uh, these two pucks or plates installed in the spring, and then I have that tool down through the middle of them. And you can see it's clipped on to this bottom one. And I've uh, put a 19 millimeter on the top and compressed that spring together. Um, now, I probably could move this puck up one more level to get a little more compression. But uh, we'll see how that works. Uh, I think that's going to be pretty good. Okay, uh, I actually did move this uh, bottom one down one more uh, coil. And what you can see here, see how we have our spring compressed? And this tool is pulling these two plates together. Now that's uh, under an extreme amount of tension, but now when we lower this, uh, undo this ball joint here and here and take off this knuckle, um, we can then remove the lower control arm. We'll undo it right up here and the control rod bushing and that can all come out of the car and that spring is not going to be under any tension and we can go lay it down in the corner of the shop. Okay, next we are going to remove um, the shocks because I'm going to replace the shocks they look original and this is a uh, 17 millimeter and you can see there's two nuts on here one's a lock nut so we can zip off the top one like that and if we're lucky which we are we can turn the bottom one without the shock actually spinning uh, and that's that's going to work good Pressure is off of there. So we'll set those aside. We'll take our top plate off. This is a, uh, it's like concave. And the convex side actually goes down. Concave side up. And then you have a bushing right here. We'll just set that aside. And then our shop is actually loose. All right, I do have a jack stand under there just in case just in case that spring compressor is gonna pop loose. We only wanna remove that jack stand when we're finally done and ready to actually remove the spring. Now what I'm gonna do now, I've already loosened the top nut on the upper control arm because once we separate this control arm, um, <clears throat> that spring is no longer gonna be held in by anything. Now, what I like to do, this, is, this upper control arm is just immaculate condition. I'm not going to replace this. I mean, this, this thing is beautiful. So I don't want to mess up this boot. Um, so I'm going to put a little grease on my tool here when I slide it on there so it doesn't damage the boot at all. All right, I've just got a little grease on here. I'm just wipe that on there like that. And we're going to take this nut off. All right, now technically this control arm is disconnected and that's just held in there uh, by the taper on the ball joint, upper ball joint stud. All right, put that in there like that. And that grease will slip around our boot. And then I've got my little helper that I always put in here. Maybe I'll stick that guy right in there like that.
There we go. Perfect. So, and we did come down onto the jack stand a little bit um, because there's still a little tension on the spring. But now I'm going to go ahead and raise the car. And we should see that spring compressor do its job. All right, there you go, guys. You see that? See this big gap that opened up down here? That spring is under tension. So let me move this out of the way. See, we can actually pull this down. See, that spring is now loose. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and get that spring out of the car and set it in a safe place. All right, we're going to move the shock. There we go. I'm going to grab the spring by the sides very carefully. All right, there we go. And we're just going to go set this down on the side of the shop. Guys, this is uh, the most dangerous job you can probably do on one of these cars uh, if you don't do it correct. Uh, if that tool is not on there correct, that is uh, the potential energy that is stored there can do serious damage if that pops loose. So be extremely careful. I'm going to set it over here, far away from the workplace workspace, and then we're going to go back over here, work on the car. Now, since that spring uh, compressor tool only have one, I'm going to go ahead and completely do the driver's side of the vehicle, and then reinstall the spring, and then go over to the passenger side. All right, let's just inspect this upper control arm ball joint because this thing is in beautiful condition. That is still <clears throat> completely firm and, and tight. There's no reason whatsoever. The bushings are excellent. So we're going to leave that alone. Now down here, we can see, got that old shock. We're getting that out of here. And then here's our ball joint. Look how floppy that thing is. So let's go ahead and get the ball joint separator and uh, we'll get this off of here. Go ahead and get that old nut off of there. And then we're going to put our ball joint separator around here. It's just a spike or a stud that presses down on the top of it. And this goes around the bottom. There we go. There's our spindle. Now, we're going to clean all this up in the parts washer and refinish everything, put in new ball joints. Let's go ahead and continue. Um, the shock is 10 millimeters. I'll take out those 10 millimeter nuts. We'll get that shock off of here. There we go. And then you got to bend it all the way forward. And there's one in the back. There we go. And this is the old original shock. Now, uh, see how these bushings go? The bushing goes on top between this plastic tube and the body of the car. Um, so this plastic tube is excellent condition. So I'm going to clean that up and we're going to reuse that. And I see that the, this is the bump stop underneath here. Uh, that's actually in pretty good condition, but we'll probably replace that with the new Bilstein shocks. Uh, and then you have a spacer right there. Uh, now, let's see if the shock is still good. <laughs> Look at that. 40 years old, guys. Mercedes Benz. Actually, this is made by Bilstein. Still working. That's fantastic. But we're going to put a new shock on here because we're just doing an overhaul. All right, now set that aside. Now under here, this is your spring perch. This is where your uh, spring mounts. We're gonna go ahead and remove the spring perch. These are three 13 millimeter bolts. Uh, and then that can come off so we can clean all this up in the parts washer. All right, as far as the bolts go, there's our spring perch. Get all that dirt off of there. Nothing wrong with these parts, guys. Uh, this is just stamped steel. We can clean that up and repaint it. It's perfectly fine. And I always like to put my bolts back in here so I don't lose them. 
We'll even, we're gonna clean up the bolts too. Now this is your front control arm mounting bushing, uh, your control rod uh, front mount bushing. Um, I don't think I've ever seen one of these wear out ever. So we're not even gonna worry about that. Um, maybe if you have like 400,000 miles on your vehicle, you might see this worn out, but it's just not really a wear item. Um, now we want to raise the car up in the air and access our lower control arm and our control rod bushing. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is remove this uh, lower control arm. And you see there's an eccentric right here that rotates and this controls uh, your camber, uh, camber caster settings. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark where it currently is, something like that right there. Just so when I put it back together, we're pretty close for the alignment shop. I'm gonna mark it right back here too. See that original Cosmoline up in there? Original cavity wax in the car. Pretty cool that that's still there. All right, this is a 24 millimeter. And we're gonna go ahead and get this big old bolt off of here. All right, there's the uh, little eccentric that I uh, pulled off the end. You can see there's a notch in it right there. Well, if I pull the bolt out, there we go. So, show you how this works. The bolt also has a notch in it right there. So it goes into that. So when you turn that bolt, those eccentrics have to turn also. And so it can move forward or move backward. That's what that is. And look how clean that original bolt is. Still got all the zinc plating on it. Okay, now we're coming under the car and we can see right there. That's our control rod bushing. And to get this out, you need a 13 millimeter. And there's three 13 millimeter bolts. Now they're uh, Loctited in there. So they're pretty snug trying to get them out. Germans use blue Loctite on a lot of suspension parts. So we'll slowly get them out here. Okay, the reason we got that bolt out and those three is so we can do this. We're gonna pull out the control arm and control rod bushing. And that's like our lower, you know, that would normally be an A arm, but that's the uh, Mercedes design. Okay, so this is the part that we want to replace. There's a, uh, you can see on the other side, I think this boot, yeah, see how this boot is torn down in there? Um, However, these lower control arm bushings are outstanding condition. It would be a complete waste of time to change those bushings. I bet these are better uh, than what is being sold nowadays. So I'm going to leave those in, but we're going to clean all this up and uh, repaint everything. Okay, there we go, guys. The driver's side suspension is completely removed from the vehicle. You can see there's still some dirt where I couldn't pressure wash behind the spring up there. But now we're going to start cleaning and reassembly. So we have our lower control arm and control rod. Uh, here is the hub we need to detach from the rotor. There's the dust shield. Uh, there's our steering knuckle and there's our spring perch. Um, so we're saving this stuff. We're cleaning it up, getting rid of the rotor, putting in new bearings, but of course saving the hub. So let's start uh, cleaning. Okay, in the meantime, all that dirt that we saw behind the spring, I'm soaking that in bleach white and I wanna to try to get some of that dirt out of there so it won't be behind the spring when we put the spring back in. All right, let's see how good that stuff comes out of there. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go, much better. There's still gonna be some up there, but you got the big, Big chunks out of there, that's much better. Okay, we have our rotor, and you can see it's attached to the hub with five Allen bolts. Now, that's a giant impact. This is like 1,700 foot-pounds. And you just gotta make sure it's seated good. And then we can separate 
our hub from our rotor. There we go. There's our hub. Now we want to remove this rear seal, get that bearing out, and then get all the old grease out, refinish this, and clean it all up. And we will uh, toss these uh, rotors. Okay, we have our hub in a vise, and we want to get this seal out. Now we're going to use a seal puller, which looks like this, and that just goes under the lip there. And sometimes they come out, but what, what you have to do most of the time is chisel around the edge and just chisel in the old seal. And that will relieve, it's a press fit, and that will relieve the uh, tension. And then we can get it out of there. All right, I think that's going to be enough. Let's try this. There we go. The seal went flying across the room. And there is our old original bearing. So we're going to replace those bearings. And now we're going to start cleaning. We want to get all this old, see this old grease? We want to get all this out of here and start cleaning up all our parts. Okay, we're here at the parts washer. And... We're just going to start cleaning up uh, these hubs. The parts washer solvent will just melt away that grease. And then once that's done, we can inspect the uh, races, make sure they look okay. That's the surface where the bearings ride. I'm going to repaint these, so I like to just use some scotch Brite on the surface to clean up any grease or debris on there. Okay, there's the bearing race, and I can see it's in beautiful condition. Same goes for back here. Outstanding condition. No reason to knock out the races and change those. Normally, you only have to do that if you have a bearing failure and it damages the race. All right, let's do this next one and then start cleaning the next pieces. Okay, here's our steering knuckle. Now, we wanna knock out this ball joint first before we clean things up. And to do that, we need to knock off this, uh, or not knock off, we need to unbolt this arm that the tie rod connects to. Uh, otherwise, we can't press in the uh, new ball joint with the tool that we have. So, let me go ahead and get this removed. And this is a 19 millimeter, and these are uh, Loctited in there. With blue Loctite, so we got to use uh, the big impact. There we go. There we go. See the blue Loctite on that original bolt? All right, now let's get this ball joint knocked out and start cleaning up the uh, steering knuckle. Okay, we're back over at the vise, and you see we have our steering knuckle in the vise. There's our ball joint. Now guys, this is a press fit, and this is how you remove them. It's a little barbaric, but uh, this is how you do it. You get a big slug like that, and it takes a few hits. You don't want to hold it with your hand, because if it goes through, it's going to hurt your hand. Your hand's going to go through with it. And you just got to bang the shit out of it. Went. Damn, that one was in there. All right, guys, there we go. That's why we're placing that ball joint. It was still working, but that grease is going to come out, and this thing would fail very soon. All right, we're back at the parts washer, and we're going to start cleaning up our skewing knuckles. All right, these are the, uh, this is the arm that the tie rod's connected to that I had to take off so we can press in our new ball joint, get this thing cleaned up. Okay, here are the dust shields. Get those things cleaned up real good. 
Here's our spring perch. Now, also I have all the bolts in this uh, container and we're gonna let these soak. And those are cleaned up really nice. Okay, before we can wash the, uh, clean up the control arm, we wanna get our old control rod bushing off of here. And that's a 13 millimeter bolt, same as on your uh, tie rod. So let's loosen that and then we're gonna spin this out of here. This can just spin off. And I'm just gonna count the threads uh, so we can get the other one installed roughly the same, but usually that method doesn't work too well, but I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, let's see how many we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight threads showing. And that way, again, for the alignment shop, we're gonna put the other one in with roughly eight threads showing. We'll see how good that works. But now we can just spin this piece off of here. And this one is not seized in there. It's very, comes off very easy. All right. We can throw this guy away. Okay, let's let all this dry. Now keep in mind, this is really like one side of the car. Um, I do have the hub from both sides and the tie rod arms from both sides and the dust shields, but you see um, on the other side of the car, we still need to remove all the same stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, we'll go ahead and knock in the ball joint now, and then we'll refinish all this in the original factory uh, black. Uh, after it dries and then we'll reassemble it on the car and then I'll just show you the passenger side once it's done We won't record all this again. All right guys. What we have here is the ball joint press tool There's a 20 20 ton hydraulic jack and You can see this tool It has a cutout in it that allows the steering knuckle To fit into the cutout see how that steering knuckle can fit in there like that and then it's just a, you know, steel bar that presses down to our ball joint. And we have a cup underneath here so it can go into the cup if it protrudes a little bit. And I'm just going to use the jack to press that in. I'll zoom into the ball joint so you can see it. Okay, I think you can see the knurls on the ball joint. Those are the little, uh, it's like a ribbed edge. It's called a knurl. And that's going to press down into there. See it moving? And we just want to do it until it bottoms out. All right, I think that's it. Okay, so you can see the ball joint perfectly pressed in and it's perfectly flush around the bottom. See if I can get an angle where you guys can see that. There you go. See how it's perfectly flush around the bottom? And uh, there we go. Our new ball joint is installed. Now let's start painting some stuff. Okay, before I start painting, I like to clean everything with acetone. Um, this is a great solvent and it just removes any of the uh, like film that was left over from the parts washer and make sure we get all that off of here and makes for a great surface to paint on. So I'm just going to go through and just wipe all this down with acetone and let it dry. And to be honest guys, I don't think I need to repaint this. Uh, that original paint from the factory is still on here and it looks fantastic. So yeah, I might actually leave this. We'll see how it looks when the, uh, when the acetone dries, but I think we have the original factory paint. I mean, look at that. That looks fantastic. That's all the original factory paint. So yeah, we may not need to repaint this stuff. So I have refinished uh, the hubs, cleaned all the old grease out, refinished them in black so they uh, look nice. That's how they came from the factory. 
And over here we have our outer wheel bearing, our inner wheel bearing uh, for both sides and our seals. Uh, now this is grease. This just happens to be from Mercedes. Uh, but guys, Mercedes doesn't have a special grease company. I just happen to have this tube. Uh, you can use Timken, Napa, any wheel bearing grease is going to be fine. Um, so what we want to do is we'll squirt some grease out here. And we want to go ahead and pack our bearings. Now, I'm only going to do the inner bearing, which goes here, first, and then put our seal in. Uh, and then we'll do the outer bearing and then let it sit like this because the outer bearing is not held in with a seal. So that'll just sit like that until I put it back on the car. And to pack a bearing, we just get it in our hand and we start packing the grease into the bearing and you want it to start squirting out your rollers, your bearings. And you'll see the grease, it'll leave my hand and get up into the bearing. Let's do it on both the inside of our hub here. Put some nice grease down in there. There we go. And we'll put our bearing in here. There we go. And then we want to put our seal on. And to seat the seal, I just use a socket. And when we get it relatively flat, And we just want to tap our seal in there. A little bit more on this side. All right. There we go. The seal is evenly pressed in all around the edges just like we want it sorry before we do the outer bearings what we want to do is mount our new rotor now you see there's holes all along here and you notice the holes are offset that's outside inside outside inside the the uh, the, the rotor goes on like that and then you want to put the bolts back in but the bolts go on the inside holes See, that one are the ones in the center. The ones that are pushed towards the outside, that's actually on the other side where your wheel mounts to the hub. Now, Mercedes uses blue Loctite uh, when mounting these. So you want to put some blue Loctite, just a little, and then you just want to go ahead and thread them in by hand and get them all started before torquing it down. And there we go guys there's our new hub and rotor now we can go ahead and pack this outer bearing all right there we go one side done let me finish the other side all right those are done let's set those aside and go back to the suspension okay guys what we have here is the uh lower control arm and control rod and I put a little anti-seize on the threads uh, of the control rod bushing. We're going to go ahead and screw this back in here. All right, it was somewhere right around there. Let me count the threads. Yep, eight threads. That's about where it was. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this down once we get it back on the car. And I couldn't help myself. I went ahead and refinished all the suspension uh, in the semi-gloss. Um, there's our steering knuckle. That's all refinished. Uh, the spring perch, tie rod, uh, arms that connect to the tie rods, the dust shields. And there's the grease caps. Uh, and, of course, down here we've refinished the hubs, put on the new rotors. And we have our refinished control arm and control rod bushing. Uh, so let's go ahead and start reassembling everything. All right. First thing I want to do, I'm going to get this guy lined up and get our control rod bushing in there. 
get the holes lined up. There we go. All right. Now let's get our bolt back in here. And remember, this is where I made the mark so we can get it pretty close for the alignment shop. There we go. That's right on our mark. Now I'm loosely gonna put this nut back on. We don't wanna torque anything down till the car is under its own weight, till it's under load. Otherwise you could get binding on the suspension bushing. And remember I made my mark here. That shows me where that one was. There we go, perfect. All right, now what I wanna do is make sure we have the length of our control rod bushing correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolts through the back, but if the length is a little off, we can adjust it right here. Okay, there's the uh, control arm we just installed. Now I'm back here behind the control rod bushing. And I've gotta get all the bolts back in here and you need to put uh, blue Loctite. See, there's blue Loctite on the bolts. And this top one is kind of tricky. Let's see if I can get this one started. Oh, it's my lucky day. Torque them down in a minute. There we go. Now I need to get uh, my manual wrench and torque those down. And if you just noticed, Milwaukee just sent back my electric uh, impact. There we go. Uh, that's a big deal, guys, because they have a five-year warranty, and it takes like three-day turnaround time to repair it. That's if you get the pro I think it's the fuel is what they call it or something like that. Uh, so that's good. I have that back now. All right, there we go. New control rod bushing. And there we go. That's what that looks like. There's our new control rod bushing and we've refinished it. We got our lower control arm mounted in there. Now let's put on our spring perch and start uh, then the steering knuckle and get that reattached up here and then put in the deadly compressed spring. Okay, the spring perch just goes, let's see, uh, here we go, right like that. And again, you want blue Loctite, that's what Mercedes did, so we're just repeating their steps. And we'll put our 13 millimeters back in here. Okay, excuse my messy table, but uh, here are the new Bilstein shocks. Um, here we go. This is what the shock looks like. Now, they included a new bump stop. You can see the original one. See how it kind of rotted away down there? Now, I was going to reuse uh, the original shock cover, but Bilstein sent these very nice uh, rubber covers, and I think I like these better. Um, let me go show you what the original one looks like. Yeah, there's the original one. Just goes over, just goes over the shock like that. But uh, I like these. These are nicer, and so I'm going to use these now. Here we go. That's goes across the top, right like that. There we go. Uh, now these are the HD shocks. Uh, Bilstein makes two kinds: regular duty and heavy duty. Um, I always use the heavy duty. It most closely matches um, the original Bilsteins that Mercedes put on the car. If you go with the regular duty, you're going to get a little bit more sway, a little more body roll, um, and I don't like it. I've tried that on cars, and it doesn't feel good. So here's the, uh, here's the shock number right there, 24007047 or B36-07044. These are the right ones. So... Let's go ahead and get a shock on the car. Now, Bilstein does supply all new hardware. There's our bushings, and one bushing is actually gonna go there, and then this one goes up top, and they provide a new plate that goes over the top of it, and a new mounting nut, along with, these are the mounting uh, bolts, and two little lock washers. These go down here. So let's go ahead and get all this new stuff on there.
All right, let's go ahead. We're gonna mount this uh, outer one and then we'll mount our inner one. Okay, here's kind of the tricky part. There you go, guys. That's the hole I'm going for right there. Get it lined up a little bit more. There we go. And we're gonna get our steering knuckle and install it here, and then we're ready to put that spring back in. All right, guys, you can see here, all I've done is put our steering knuckle, I just ran our ball joint up through there and just put the nut uh, loosely on it. And that's just gonna be able to hang there. And now let's lower the car, put it on a jack and get our spring back in there. All right, guys, this is one of the most terrifying jobs to do on a car, but we're gonna knock it out real quick. Now, you can see I have a jack stand right there because what we're gonna do, we're gonna slip the spring in here and then lower the car onto the jack stand so that control arm right here comes up and holds that spring in place and it can't pop out. Now, when we put this spring in here, we also, you see that hole right there? That's a drain hole. And you see this little stop right here? That's where the coil goes around and the end of the coil stops right at that drain hole and where this stop is. We need to make sure it's correctly oriented like that because that's the, the correct way for the spring to sit in the perch. All right, guys, here we go. Now notice how I have my thumbs in like that in case this does pop apart. Okay, got that in there. Now I need to push it up into there and lower the car onto this jack stand and secure everything in place. So see if we can go ahead and do that right now. Okay, there we go. See, I can barely get a nut on there. There we go. Once we put a nut there, everything's gonna be tight and secure and that spring cannot pop out. Okay, there we go. We are safe, guys. If that spring were to violently decompress right now, the steering knuckle would hold it together. Man, I hate doing that. That's uh. That is scary. Now we'll torque that up later and we want to go ahead and uh, torque our ball joint and I just spin that around and do it from the back side. So I'm going to go ahead and knock that out and then we're going to decompress our spring. And the way I do that, we're going to come up here and actually go down through. You can see there's the spring compressor right down in there. We're going to go down onto that guy. And I'll show you guys what it looks like from down here. There we go. Did you guys see that spring decompress? I mean, I guess you did. Now we can remove our pucks. See one there. And see if I can get this one out. Boom. Ball joint, control rod bushing, new shock, refinished all the suspension. Now let's move to the uh, wheel hub assembly, the rotor, and the brakes. Okay, so while it was on the jack stand and under tension, notice how I lined up the uh, bolt in the same spot as it was. That way the alignment shop has the easiest time doing the alignment, or at least it's gonna be good enough for me to drive to the shop. So let's go ahead and get the hub and rotor on now. Uh, we wanna put on our dust shield. And doesn't that look nice? Refinish that, cleaned it in the parts washer. So we'll put this right up here. Now, again, Mercedes Loctite's these. See, there's blue Loctite on here. So you're gonna make sure you apply your blue Loctite.
And I'm just gonna put a little grease where the seal rides. That way, uh, you know, when we first roll the car, it doesn't like roll the seal over. Here we go. Smear a little grease right there on our spindle. There we go, perfect. Now, I wanna wipe away the grease from the threads here before I put the spindle nut on. Otherwise, that makes it tough to get your spindle nut on. All right, we've cleaned up our spindle nut also in the parts washer. Now, this has a flat side. Let's see if you can see this. See, it has a flat side and a not flat side. Obviously, the flat side goes against the bearing. And guys, these just need to be like snug, hand tight, because you want to basically set the preload of your bearing. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so to set the preload, listen. Hear that moving back and forth? We want to snug this up until we get rid of that slop. Still got slop. Still there, we want to keep going. Okay, it's gone. So let me back it off just a little bit. All right, I can hear it just a little bit and feel it just a little bit. So we're gonna go a little bit more. There we go. Little bit more. There we go. That's perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and tighten down the lock nut right here. That keeps it from coming off. There we go. Now for our grease cap. Now I've also cleaned and refinished the grease cap and Mercedes says to put a little grease in the end of the grease cap. So we've got some grease in there. And we'll just tap that on with a rubber mallet. And there we go guys. Hub, rotor, new bearings, new seals, new ball joint, new shock, new control rod bushing. Now let's go ahead and get our new brake on here. Okay guys, the way that I do this in order to spill as little brake fluid as possible, I get the new brake hose, here we go. It goes up there like that. And I have a little cap I can put on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw off this old brake line. I think it's uh, 11 millimeter. And as soon as I get it off, I'm gonna screw on that new one. I just love these West Coast cars. Did you see how easy that was to get off of there? Any Northeast car, man, you have to put a torch on there, you know, a little butane or map gas and heat that up and break through the rust. And these West Coast and Southern cars are just awesome like that. All right, there it goes. You can see the brake fluid's coming out. I'm just gonna stick this hose up there. Bam. Screw the new line in and we are not leaking. Here's our new Ate caliper, brand new, out of the box. And of course they provide new mounting hardware with the Loctite actually already applied. And there's our uh, brake pad, the pins that secure in the clip, a punch, a hammer, and the brake pads, and I'll show you how to reassemble this. Okay, here can be the messy part. Basically, I'm gonna thread our new caliper, pop off our cap, all right, brake fluid starts coming out again. We stick it right there. We gotta get this threaded. See, see if I can do this. Oh, there we go, got it. Let me show you how much brake fluid I've lost during this whole process. That's it, guys. 
a very small puddle. You can do that on both sides of the car and your brake fluid reservoir will not empty out. And then we can of course flush the brakes, which we're gonna do, flush through all new fluid. So let's go ahead. We'll get this mounted up here and a couple of 19 millimeters behind here. Okay, let's put in our new brake pads. Slip one in over here. And guys, these are uh, Ate brake pads. No cheap parts going on this car. All right, and the way these work, I've showed this in several videos. That's a, that is a, like a lead crush washer right there. See that? And so when we put in our pad retainer, this goes through the hole there and all the way through to the other side, like that. And then we mash this end down. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. And push that one through. There we go, to the other side. Now we get our punch and our hammer. There we go and that holds them in there now let's put our brake pad wear sensors and attach our wear sensor cable and then tighten down our lines okay here's the pad wear sensors and here we go made in germany um, they're made by phoebe phoebe bilstein and that plugs in and that goes into our sensor let me show you how this works all right see if i can do this one-handed you see that little hole right there in the brake pad? Well, that's where you plug in the sensor. Oops, it goes that way. There we go. Let's see if I can get that in there with one hand on the camera. There we go. Oops, sorry. There we go. See, I've got that in there. And it just slips down in there like that. Now we're going to reattach this with our little 10 millimeter. And this plugs in right there. So let me get the other one installed. All right, guys, there we go. Brakes are done, ball joints are done, suspension refinished, new shock, springs put back in there, new brake lines, new control rod, bushing back in here. Now, doesn't that look nice? Now, the next thing we need to do is start reassembling our steering linkage that goes all the way across the car. Before we reinstall all the steering linkage that goes across the car, and also I have to do everything you just saw on the driver's side, I have to do over here on the passenger side. But what I wanna do at this point is change these engine mounts. Okay, yeah, those, see how that engine mount is kind of flattened out there? That looks like a pretty old engine mount. So it, it's easier to do this when all the steering linkage is out of the car here. And we're gonna go ahead and undo the steering shock damper here. And then we need to get up underneath here, loosen that bolt right there. That holds the steering mount to the frame of the car. And then we actually need to put a piece of wood under here and lift the engine and that will allow us to get those mounts out. So let me do that and uh, not going to record that because that's kind of tedious. It's under the car and I'll show you when we're putting the new mounts in. So getting the engine mounts out, it's not as simple as just undoing the bolt down at the bottom. You have to come at the top of the engine and we're disconnecting the fan shroud and we've removed our throttle linkage that goes back to the firewall. Uh, let's see, you can see it on the table right over there. I removed that linkage because when we lift the engine, we don't wanna bend the linkage or cram the uh, fan shroud into the fan. It needs to be loose. Now, what I've also done is unclipped the little 
clip here that holds the cruise control line in uh, so it doesn't pull on that cruise control cable. And all that stuff is coming out when we do the zinc plating anyway. But once that's all done, there is, you can see right there, there's a bolt right down there. We have to get down there. That holds the engine mount in. There's one there, and there's one over on the other side. And we have the air filter uh, housing and all that taken off because we have to get down right there. There's a bolt right there and on the other side. We got to get down there. And don't worry, all this is going to get cleaned up, guys. That's uh, That hasn't been cleaned in there for 40 years. Uh, but let's go ahead and get the car back up. And we're going to undo the bolts on the bottom, which I'm not going to record that. It's just two bolts on the bottom. And then we're going to undo these bolts on the top. And then we will lift the engine about uh, engine about three to four inches, and that will allow clearance to slide the mount, which is right there, slide it out the back side and on the other side of the car. Okay, before you can lift the engine, you also have to remove the engine, uh, the bolt from the engine shock damper. So I've taken the bushing off, taken the little 10 millimeter off, so now that can lift up through the frame when we lift the engine. Okay, you see we have our board and our telescoping jack. Let me see if I can get up here so you can see this. So we're going to start lifting the engine. And you can watch the mount. See the mount? There we go. So that arm just came. See how much the mount expanded? That arm just came loose from the mount. See, our shield is now loose. So now we can get up there. We can take this one out on that side, and right here, there's one little Allen we need to get access to there. Take that one out, and then these mounts will slip out. Guys, here's how I do that. You need a very small quarter inch socket that you can rotate like that, and you can get it up in there and take that guy out. You can get that guy out of there. Oh, that bolt on the other side is still hanging. Oh, there we go. Got it. Now, get that guy out of there. And let's, there we go. Okay, there's the engine mount. And uh, still in pretty decent shape, but it was, uh, there you go. It's got a definitely a stress crack starting there and there. And it was, it was pretty squished. Um, but there's those little bolts we had to uh, get access to. So let's compare this to the new mount. All right, so let's see. Here's the original mount that came out of here. And there's the Mercedes part number. You guys can't see that on camera. Um, but there's the Limforder mount. And this is what the Classic Center sent me. There's the Mercedes sticker, but you can see how Limforder is identical, and it looks like maybe there's like a plastic cap, or protective cap over the top of here, or just where the rubber was poured, not sure, but uh, that's genuine Mercedes, but you can see why we're replacing it here. See how this one is squished down? I don't know, that's about an inch, and this one is nice and tall. And also, we have our stress crack that's starting to form right here. So, these would have lasted a little while longer, but uh, those are going to last a long time. So, let's go ahead and stick this mount back in there. Okay, just as a little uh, professional courtesy to the next guy that goes in there, uh, we're going to coat all these bolts. Those are for the mount, and those are from for the mount to the mounting arm. We're going to coat them with some anti-seize, so... The next guy that has to go in here uh, is going to have an easy time getting them out. Okay, we've got those nice and coated. Let's go ahead and install the passenger side mount. And then I'll knock out the driver's side off camera. We have our brand new engine mounts installed in the car. Beautiful. Now it's time to go ahead and start reassembly of the suspension on this side. I will show you when I'm done. We are officially done 
with all of the front suspension refurbishment and all of the rear suspension. Uh, in this video, we did everything on the front end. Of course, new hub, rotor, bearings, uh, rear bearing seal, caliper, brake pads, brake pad wear sensors, new Bilstein shock, new brake hoses, new control rod bushing, new ball joints, and then we just installed the tie rod. Then of course we have our drag link across the center and our steering stabilizer shock. And if you look up in here, you can see our new engine mounts. There's the passenger and there's the driver right up there. And it just looks absolutely fantastic under here. And of course the passenger side is done too. Very nice. New Bilstein shock, got the springs back in. Very nice. Of course, in the last video, you saw everything in the rear. New axles, sway bar end links, rotors, calipers, hoses, new SLS leveling valve, new accumulators, new axles, everything. So guys, this is now set up for the next tens of thousands of miles. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. There'll be several more videos on this car and we'll see you next time. Take care.